This side as well, folks. Three points out to you.
numbers to it. No, 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 no. <laughs> If you want to make a move the stairs, please. Make way up. He's going to go up top of the top there. So you get that and the hats.
to remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the service of their country and to ask for God's help and blessing that we might be worthy of their sacrifice each day of our life. Remembering especially those who fell at Zeebrugge. Our reading is taken from the book of Micah. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and the people will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will ever make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Amen. I invite civic dignitaries and military personnel to come forward to cast their beads upon the waters. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless these wreaths, which we lay as a mark of respect for those who died, particularly at the Battle of Seabrugge. May our memories never die of the great sacrifice they gave for their country and for their comrades. We make this prayer for Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
receive God's holy word and to pray for the needs of the whole world, to remember those who have suffered in war and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that through his grace we may be made worthy of the sacrifices they made. And our service continues with the Royal Naval Hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. <clears throat>
of the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. Although in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth, and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right, well, we've got no loudspeaker, so we're going to have to be a bit informal. Can you people down there come a bit further up here, please? Thank you. So you might get to hear what I'm saying. Come up. And would you mind, Royal Marine veterans, coming a bit? of the centenary of the Battle of Zeebrugge and the pivotal role that the Royal Marines played in this. And I'd particularly like to thank the commanding officer, Colonel Churchward, and Padre Harrison for asking me along. I have to confess I was in the Army for 28 years and my first encounter with the Royal Marines was in late 1992, early 93, near the end of the Balkans War. A troop, I think, had been sent out to aid the United Nations British contingent headquarters. I found them great company, humorous, and most importantly of all, dedicated professionals. They were a great asset to the brigade that I was working with at the time. It was then I discovered that they called us army types, Pongos, and that their nickname was boot decks. We're called pongos because we go in trenches for days and don't get washed. That's why. But they're called boot decks. And I believe this name is derived from the leather Marines used to cut them off from their boots and wrapped around their necks to stop their throats being cut. <coughs> An indication of how they put their lives in the greatest dangers over the years. The Corps of Royal Marines was founded in 1755 as the Royal Na Navy's infantry troops and is effectively its amphibious light infantry. I'll be told later if I'm not correct. Although some say their origins go back to the formation of the English Army's Duke of York and Albany's Maritime Regiment of Foot at the grounds of the Honourable Artillery Company on the 28th of October 1664. Whatever their origins, there is no doubt that they have proved their bravery and courage on many occasions in all terrains over their long history. In today's first lesson from the prophet Micah, we heard that in the messianic times, swords would be beaten into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. And this is why we need well-trained and well-prepared armed forces for the defense of our freedoms and our values. As we all know, only last week our forces took action against the dictator Assad in Syria to warn him not to use chemical or biological weapons, which is seen as a step too far. In the second lesson from the Book of Wisdom, we heard how in the eyes of the foolish, death is seen as a disaster or annihilation. But for people with faith, they are at peace and their hope is full of immortality. I read with great interest the whole saga of the Battle of Zeebrugge. And whilst not every part of the operation went to plan, they rarely do. The Royal Marines played a pivotal role in engaging the enemy so that two ships, the Intrepid and the Iphigenia, Ifigi Virginia were scuffled in order to block the canal entrance to the sea to stop enemy submarines passing through and destroying British ships. I was also delighted to read 
of the two of our Liverpool ferries, the Iris and the Daffodil, were used during the battle to ferry Royal Marines and supplies, making this centenary pertinent for all of us here today who live in Merseyside. But the thing that leapt out of the pages was the fact that 366 of those 732 men from the 4th Battalion, the Royal Marines, were killed, wounded or missing on the fateful day of St George's Day, 1918. This is a staggering number and shows the courage, valour and tenacity of these Marines. And they were rewarded with 24 gallantry medals, two Victoria Crosses, and 28 mentions in dispatches. And believe you me, that is fantastic. The Victoria Crosses were given after balloting all the men who fought on that day for the two most deserving, though all of the men's records were amended to state that they had been close to receiving such a high honor for bravery. To honor all these men faith further, the Naval High Command decided the Royal Marines will no longer ever call one of their battalions the 4th out of respect for the Royal Marines who lost their lives that day. Incidentally, talking of the Victoria Cross and me being a priest, you've noticed that most of our Western democracies honour their war heroes by associating with the cross of Jesus who laid his life down for us all. The Victoria Cross, the conspicuous gallantry cross, the Military Cross, the George Cross, the Croix de Guerre in France, and the Iron Cross in Germany. And I used to love telling the children in service schools in Germany of this in Cyprus and passing around the repli replicas I have of the VC, the George Cross, and the Military Cross. I used to love wearing it, pretending they were mine. <laughs> but the children were always fascinated with showing these around. The Royal Marines have so much to be proud of in their great history. We look at their service and sacrifices with great pride and thank them for what they have done over the years. And finally, if I may, I saw something pinned onto the notice board of an officer's mess in Germany quite a few years ago. I read it and it left me deeply moved. It expresses our indebtedness to past soldiers in poignant and dramatic terms. And as I read it out today, I want you to change the word soldier in your mind to all members of our armed forces, the Royal Navy, the Army, and the Royal Air Force. And this is what it said. It is not the soldier, it is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the student activist, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who permits the protester to burn the flag. So today, we salute the Royal Marines, who gave us the ultimate sacrifice to maintain our freedoms. May the Corps go from strength to strength, and may God give eternal light and peace to all those who have died for their country. So we now say together the Naval Calling Go before us, O Lord, in all our doings, with thy most glorious favours, and further us with thy continual help, and in all works begun, continued and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name, and finally by thy mercy 
obtain everything through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Royal Marines collect. O oh, eternal Lord God, who through many generations has united and inspired the members of our corps, grant thy blessing we beseech thee on Royal Marines serving around the globe. Bestow thy crown of righteousness upon all our efforts and endeavours, and may our laurels be those of gallantry and honour, loyalty and courage. We ask this in the name of him whose courage never failed, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we honour those who have fallen in the laying of our reeds.
Cut! Come Bowers. Hurry. Cut They shall not grow old, as we that have left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. <clears throat> At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Father, have mercy on your people and open our hearts to peace and love. Reward all those who have died for their country and grant that the United Kingdom and all nations may continue to work for peace and justice. Bless us in your service and help us to follow Jesus Christ, who is our Saviour and our Lord. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit.
order. Find it.
Thank you.